This is Patrick from WSOU 89.5 FM, The Loudest Rock, and I am here with Monkey from Corn. How are you doing today? I'm good, man. You know, just getting my day started over here on the West Coast. All right, cool. So um, last time WSU caught up with Corn was in 2012, actually, with Fieldy. So a lot has happened since then. Got a lot of catching up to do. Uh, first of all, earlier this year, you released your 12th studio album, Requiem. And uh, like most albums being released, it was recorded and inspired by the pandemic. When did the recording of this album begin? Um, probably like June. I would, I, th- I think around June of 2020, um, once we kind of figured out okay, we're, nobody's going anywhere. We're, we're, we're not going to get to tour. Um, we had just released in 2019, an album called the nothing. And we were all prepared to head on the road and, and promote that album. And then, uh, you know, the pandemic started and it kind of, it didn't get, you know, legs really per Mm -hmm. se, I guess. Yeah, definitely. And, um, as a band that's always been very original, whether it's you know, electronic samples, the scooped bass sound, crazy guitar effects, um, I'm curious what it's like making an album now in the year 2020 or 2021 with all the tools and recording methods that you have access to as opposed to the early days of Corn in the 90s. You know, as things progress, as technology progresses, we tend to kind of cherry pick a lot of those things now as, you know, say like in the early 2000s we were just trying to use as much as we could higher sample rates editing like that you know pro tools and other software lends itself to but i feel like as we go through some of our catalogs and as we go through the years we have all this stuff now but we tend to use a lot less of the technology and kind of we're, we're going back like this album where we recorded on a um, two inch tape and we set up our tape machines again. And it's been a lot of fun because uh, it captures something, captures something when you go live to tape. Um, there's a ma- there's a magic there uh, as opposed to um, let me just try it 35, 36 times on the computer. But we use a lot of the technology like the higher sample rates and that type of thing. But we've gone back to a lot of our analog gear because there's a warmth to it. There's a, you know, there's just a spont a spontaneity, I guess, if, uh, you know, once, once you see that recording light turn red on a tape machine, you know, it's a, something special to it. Yeah, definitely. And uh, when I was listening to this album, I noticed uh, like a lot of corn albums over the past decades, there are songs on the album, like uh, Worst is on its way, for example, which sound like classic corn, but there's also songs like Lost in the Grander, which feel like an entirely different sound than what we're used to. Do you think the method you record, like you're recording with tapes, uh, do you think that kind of makes it come out this way or uh, does it turn out accidentally? How does, how does that happen? I think our process is basically the same, you know, Mm -hmm. um, Yes, on like albums like uh, The Path of Totality, when it was just done in a computer and we were doing collabs, Jonathan and I were doing, this is before Brian's return, uh, when we were doing more of an experimental thing, we were just in the computer working. But an album like having Brian back and it's more like just us sitting in a room coming up with things, you know, we'll record those ideas and bits and pieces of song that pretty much has stayed the same throughout our whole career 30 years of just we get in a room and we start just riffing you know we start just putting putting ideas together um one at a time and it just it kind of just builds from there you know and sometimes like when you look at the two songs like lost in the grandeur that's actually a riff that was sitting around for five or six years that we could never really figure out where to take it i mean as far as like where okay where does it go from here there's that main riff so things like that end up on a record when they they find a home or they find a direction but i always feel like we're trying to push a little bit and challenge our audience um when we when we try things like odd timings and and things that might throw the listener off but i think the form the, the the format of how we write songs is typically the same we get in a room and just start to jam the technology really doesn't affect that uh it just it can enhance it i, I think it, um, did i answer your question <laughs> yeah yeah no okay. you did okay good
And uh, speaking of putting the songs together, jamming, things like that, since we last caught up with you guys, Head rejoined the band in 2013. And when people usually think of bands that have two guitar players, they think, you know, a rhythm guy and a lead guy, solo guy. But uh, as Korn is a band that doesn't have many guitar solos, but they're still two guitarists, what does a songwriting session or jam session between you and Head typically look like when you're putting these songs together? You know, we've discovered strengths um, that each of us have. He's very good at putting melodies, melody lines over the top of my weird chord voicings, I guess. And then I don't know how Jonathan, how he does it, but he can sing over pretty much anything we write, which is incredible because we write some weird stuff in, in my, you know, probably not weird to some people, but he, he's just, he has a, he has the gift of, of singing that I, I just, he baffles Brian and I, cause we're like, there's, there's no way he'll be able to, to write over this mm-hmm. and it's going to get thrown in the trash. And we write these, these riffs sometimes that it's, it's kind of hard to, to describe, but typically I'll, I'll come up with a, a riff or three quarters of a riff and then he'll help me through it. And then um, he'll try a half a dozen things as far as writing over the top of it. Or I'll try, if he gets frustrated, I'll try a few things. And sometimes I get lucky and uh, come up with a type of melody thing or a sound. Um, a lot of times I get more lucky with the, the weird sounds. Um, I typically try and experiment with a few pedals and look for texture that the song sometimes gets, gets based around a, a texture or sound. Like the loss in the grandeur that that scratchy that trip that triplet thing the song sort of takes shape around those moments but yeah uh, i'll i'll usually come up with a uh, an a weird chord voicing progression or something and he'll he'll kind of complement it so yeah or or ray and i will pair off and come up with a a groove or something and then brian will add into something or or as being an outside listener, he'll be like, that's cool, but can you try try it without this this note or add this this sort of uh this sort of thing to to help it along? Yeah, yeah, it's just uh it's fun. We have mm-hmm. fun doing it, you know. Even when things aren't working, we'll we'll push we'll push forward. And I, I always say that if it's just show up, we just show up, <laughs> which is most of it we hang out we have some fun and we, and we play music and then and things happen Re- recordings happen it's pretty magic it's pretty magical i guess yeah definitely and uh, we're running out of time here but my last question for you we've been talking about how corn is always evolving but you know so is the entire metal scene but as an early pioneer of new metal i'm curious what your thoughts are on bands like tala tetrarch cane hill that are still keeping the new metal sound relevant and fresh like what do you think when you see the sort of new metal scene now in the present day it makes me feel proud of of us and what we how we stayed true to not only the core of the sound but i mean i know that we've we've changed a lot over the years but i mean it's still you know the guitar sound is the same jonathan's vocal it's the same singer um yeah we have to change because just as creative beings we have to evolve but when I see bands like like you said, the band Tala, that band took me. Um, we actually toured with the drummer who was in a band called uh, Code Orange. We toured with mm-hmm. them in early this year and he started showing me some of some of the, what they were doing in the beginning of the year. And I was like, this this stuff is so good. I don't know. I, I could see some of the some of the inspiration, I guess in some of our early stuff. And I I even told him, I was like, this reminds me so much of our first album, our first two albums of what you guys are doing. I hope that, you know, I I was like, I hope that doesn't offend you or anything. He's like, no, I I love that. It's, it's just, it's, it's kind of, it's, it's, it's it's satisfying in the fact that a new generation is discovering and tapping into that raw emotion. I feel like that is really what we were tapping into back then, even though I was, we're just young and we didn't really understand um, what it was we were trying to say. But it was just it was came from a real uh, a real honest place. And I feel like people are discovering how to get there again 
by by using some of our older recordings as a a roadmap, I guess, and and just being completely honest, I think maybe also it has to do with the times we're living in and being frustrated and you know obviously growing up and being in high school and all that lends itself also to just discovering who you are but also like when some of the first recordings when Jonathan you know bears his soul on on a lot of a lot of the mostly every song that's that's hard to do that that takes a lot of courage in my opinion to be so open with your feelings and frustrations for the world to to know and he still does it and uh, and that that to me is just it's it's such an accomplishment to be able to open up and and let people into your world it takes a lot of vulnerability and uh fearlessness honestly and i see that in in newer bands and i i it makes me it makes me very proud it makes me proud of them and makes me proud of our band too yeah, definitely. Uh, James, thank you so much for doing this. Corn Requiem out now, been out for a little while now, but go stream it, download it, get the CD, vinyl, whatever you got to do. Uh, anything else you want to add? I want to add that I'm really grateful that <laughs> after all these years, me and these guys, we get to play music. It's it's an honor to, to have such loyal fans for so many years. And it's truly one in a billion that that a band from a small town gets to do this and uh it literally when i say one in a billion it literally is one in a billion that a band takes a career this far this long and it's it's mostly because the fans have believed in us and followed us and been loyal so i want to thank them so thank you so much absolutely james thank you so much patrick wsou 89.5